This is Industrial Sounds Volume 1. So yes, this is Industrial Sounds Volume 1 by Sebastian Comor of Icona Foil and Comor Commando, Icona Foil, Icona of Coil and Comor Commando fame. Really, really excited to be checking out these new patches. And I'm going to just pull up over here a pre, what we were just listening to, which is this old school sub sound. One of my favorite sounds from the patches here. So real quick, if you don't know uh, much about Serum, we cover a lot of vintage uh, synths on this channel. By the way, we do it a live stream every Wednesday at 9, Scum Night. This up here is Serum, which is a probably the most used wavetable synthesizer today. Um, and it is an extremely powerful synth. And Sebastian has done this awesome industrial sound library for it. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, check it out and see what we have as a result. So it looks like uh, you guys want to hear the bass sounds first, then the leads, then the pads and the percussion in that order. So <laughs> alumina foil. <laughs> well, it's the first of many, many fuck ups I'm going to do during this stream. So let's go ahead and we can just open up these hundred sounds here and we can start with the baseline sound that I used for that little demo. Yeah. So immediately, one of the things that stands out to me about this sound bank is uh, that we have these incredibly aggressive sounds that don't need any filtering or any processing to get them to sound really great. In fact, in that demo you just heard, I barely did any EQ or anything. Those are the sounds straight out of Serum. A couple of things I pulled with a shelf, just a little bit of low end out because it started to stack up as I was layering sounds, but really, really cool. Um, yeah, so very neat. Uh, Yes, and thank you very much, Lenishad. Thank you for being here. So, uh, really awesome that we have Sebastian here, too. So, by all means, if there's anything that you want me to highlight or show or um, give uh, some explanation for, sometimes I forget some things that are worth talking about. So, yeah, there's already equalization and everything going on here. So, here's the sound without any effects real quick. So you can hear that the distortion essentially uh, helps make that sound and we get this really cool sort of resonance sound to it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like right in your fucking eardrum the moment you hear it. And it's a really cool sound. Let's check out a couple more. We've got classic Comor Commando. And you can hear that they're very tight sounds. So as I'm playing, there's not a lot of release as compared to maybe baseline sounds that you might hear from some of these older synths. These are perfect for if you're going to do like a really fast sequence type sound. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think they're really useful for all sorts of stuff here.
They're very intense right off the bat. Uh, here's another one, bandpass filter. So something also that I've always loved about Sebastian Comor's music is all of the little like sonic bling that he puts on his sounds. So when you're listening to a Comor commando track or a squarehead track, there's all these little details floating around. And, um, you know, it's something that's a little difficult to put your finger on to know exactly how much bling you want to have. Because sometimes when you pull up a patch, like say on the Korg wave station, it's just so over the top that it's basically either the basis of your song or you'll never be able to use it so there's this uh yeah the envelopes are extremely snappy um almost to the point of like you can hear that when i'm playing this on the keyboard it's it's slightly jarring if i'm even a little bit off time but if you run a sequencer to that it's it's really tight So if you're using this type of sound, it uh, could be like a layer over top one of the other baseline layers to add a little bit more diversity to the sound as you're going. Um, let's try this one, basic EBM future pop. So uh, probably from a band or two you might have heard. So this one's really great for if you just want to get that basic sound. really, uh, again, super tight. Yeah, just like incredibly punchy, tight sounds right off the bat. And one thing also to note about these is there's an interesting thing I've noticed about Comor's music, which is the bass line sounds are always really tight as compared to a lot of bands in the same genre where their bass lines are really loose, if that makes any sense. In terms of the frequencies that you hear, it's like um, the bass is there, but it's not like overpowering. It's like in its place. And that's something that I immediately noticed about these presets when I first checked them out is that they're they're really well kind of pre-mixed so you don't have to do a lot to it swords <laughs> um pro one esque yeah it does have a little pro one sound to it doesn't it yeah going back over here you can see um what the filter is doing kind of like your basic uh subtractive synthesis stuff and something like a saw square sound here, and then just a regular saw, a very useful sound. So good mix of uh, bread and butter sounds as well as aggressive stuff that you could use. You used to have a pro one way back when, that's awesome. That's one of those synths that nowadays is just outside of the reach of anybody. You know, they're just so crazy. Uh, expensive all the sequential and moog stuff is all right bass in your face wow yeah this is this is very really really snappy i mean to say it's uh snappy doesn't do it any uh justice really really tight hey anna welcome to the stream how's it going damon descent welcome to the stream uh will you please explain the graphics on the synth okay so serum comes with a few different uh sorts of skins and this is just one of the skins you can get with it uh it is a very aesthetic skin i could set it back to i believe it's default skin uh over here let's see if it'll do it well, it seems to think it's on the default skin, but it it's not the default skin <laughs> anyways. Um, going on with the four macro knobs. So I actually don't use 
serum all that much. Oh, I guess so it's over here on the left hand side. Are these the macro knobs? Uh, so let me go pull up these. Oh, cool. I should have been doing this the whole time. What, so you can control the filter to close. So that's uh, really useful for automation, or you could assign this. Um, so I could MIDI learn this parameter real quick to my controller here, and then just move a knob. And now it's automatically moving on this. So if I just go, you guys can't see, but I'm controlling this just from my MIDI controller here. And I think I could even do it something from like one of these vintage synths. Yeah. So really, really cool. Uh, what else do we have? Scream. That sounds great. Oh my God. That's getting ridiculous. Really aggressive. And then bend me. That is so cool because it's like not bending both oscillators. It's only bending one of them, it sounds like. No, no, it's <laughs> bending both, I believe. Hey, hey, Miss FD, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Really good to have you here. How are you doing? Miss you. Um, so the uh, also an explanation about the graphics. This isn't the best example of it, but uh, let's move in, to a... Let's go back to the first preset. So something that's unique about the synthesizer, you can see how the wavetable is scanning up here. So like a PPG wave, it's basically many slices of an audio file of different waveforms. And wavetable synthesis as opposed to sort of traditional analog synthesis. I feel like most of the people coming in this video will know this, but just in case, it is where instead of just starting with a basic saw square sine or triangle wave, you've now got virtually infinite starting waveforms and you can morph them before they even hit the filter. So that's a good example. And why don't we go check out the um, different sounds here? Uh, what the macros do on this preset. This first preset's really great and what I used in the intro. I don't really hear much of a difference there. You use this if you want to have a more open sound. Right, really, really cool. Pull that back up. Uh, what else do we have? Q factor? Hmm. That's that like really gritty resonance. Yeah, the I was going to ask you about that because the other patch had this scream macro. It's very intense. Uh, it does sound like a dirty bitch. That's how we like it. Phaser. Really, really cool. So anyways, moving right along. Let's load a new preset. Do, do, do. Degraded sub. So I used either this one or the other sub patch in the intro track. Very um, reminds me of uh, Rez's song Edge. Really cool, and we can control that frequency probably with this degrader. Here. One hundred percent inspired by Rez. Glad I, I caught that. Um, some delay on the sound. Do you want that? A little bit more bite. And we can even add some FM. Oh, that sounds really cool. Kind of chirpy. Get some pretty aggressive stuff. Yeah, it is really cool. Um, so cheers to everybody who's here. Really cool to have you guys all here. Let's check this one out. Fight, uh, fight tab subby. Fat tight subby. Let's see if I can talk. Another like kind of classic sound. <laughs> we can add the res factor. Let's 
Stry Oscillator 2. Macro 3. Am I dreaming or do I hear something going on there? Oh, we can add a little bit of top end too, or pull it back. I kind of like it with a little bit less, actually. Really get that deep, you know, sort of analog texture. Um, one of the things that's interesting about Serum is I feel like it's kind of a different type of synth than I usually cover on this channel, not just because it's software, because I do use a lot of Omnisphere. I'm always covering Omnisphere whenever they come out that, yeah, some are more dramatic than others uh, or less drastic. Um, but Serum can sound incredible, but if you just use it kind of basically, it can sound very kind of like boring and digital. Um, but these sounds are not boring and digital. They have such incredible aggression to them. Um, all right, so moving on to this punchy sub. Yeah, this is what I used in the intro. We got a little delay. We got some drive. Like this is like a crazy like trap uh, sort of baseline thing that you could use if you wanted to use it as an 808. Really dirty. Let's uh, FM the oscillator. And then we can scan. So this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Uh, you can scan the wavetable and get different uh, harmonics by moving this macro. This is the bottom left here. Yeah, really cool. Hey, I appreciate it, Leno Shad. Yes, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to this uh, channel. Makes a big difference. With that motherfucking algorithm, always trying to hold me down. <laughs> uh, let's try bass tight distortion. Really uh, sort of another classic sound. By the way, Sebastian, I wanted to ask you, so the new one by one EP by Comor Commando just came out. The link is in the description if you haven't bought it yet. But I was curious if you used any of these sounds in the EP or how that came about doing another Comor Commando EP, because I want to say it was the first one in nine years or so, something like that. Um, so I was just curious if you could give us some insight into how this library came about as well as how that EP came about. Um, because a lot of us Comor Commando fans have been, uh, you know, looking forward to something and it doesn't disappoint. It's really great. Uh, that first song, the vocals on it are awesome. Just really cool. Uh, so we can control the detune here. If we wanted to get a little crazier, RMFM, Ring Mod FM. You can really hear it on the attack here. And we can add more delay. Really cool. All right, moving right along to Future Popsicle. Let's try this one out. Also a very kind of um, famous -y type sound. Um, really cool. <laughs> the way that delay comes in. Some of the basses were great as, great as arps and leads. Yeah, so I haven't really been focusing on that, but you know, you can play this totally as just like a... Like get some really cool textures out of this. Uh, definitely, I imagine if I played it in time, it would be good, but it's kind of fun to have that sort of washed out sort of scattered delay sound. Um, 
and we could uh, remove some delay if that's too aggressive. Really cool. You get that interesting sort of almost, it sounds like reverb room ringing. Uh, we could add some phaser or change the phaser frequency, sorry. You can get it really tight if you want a really snappy version. Or open it up. A lot of decay and wow, this gets huge. Um, open it all the way up. I like that it's still um, very tight, even with the, the macros all the way open, you know. Uh, just so metallic and in your face. Um, I don't use this synth as much as other people, so I'm not sure how you're getting so much aggression out of it. Uh, perhaps it's the compressor and the distortion after here. So if I turn this off real quick, let's see what we get. It's still pretty aggressive, but the difference of once you throw that on and, and get... Yeah, just really cool. Um, sounds like a Titan JP8000 Super Saw. Yeah, so it definitely, Serum for me, takes some in inspiration from the JP8000 uh, in terms of its unison engine is uh, very familiar there. Um, so we have our first industrial sound, or I'm sorry, FX sound industrial clank hit. This is so great for all of your possible front 242-esque type sounds. Like you ever need an anvil? Like I just feel like anvil hits are like such a critical part of that uh, 80s, 90s industrial sound. <laughs> uh, really fun. Um, let's go ahead and keep moving forward. I don't want to spend too much time on any one sound. Bass destruction. Wow. We're going to take a little of the sub out. It's very destroyed, but we can crank that up even further. Wow, that is intense. Whoa. Sebastian Comor says, the EP is a result of an album's worth of ideas which eventually got scrapped. I want to go in a different direction. Elements of EBM, EDM, and some classic industrial. That's a pretty good summary of what's going on with the EP, for sure. I think it's, uh, it's really a great return to form for you as an artist in that sort of era of Comor Commando uh, and also feels a, like an update. I think uh, it doesn't feel tired or whatever. I used a couple of the patches from the bank on the EP, forgot which, def some of the bases and leads. I definitely felt that way. Uh, there was some, I feel like the EP and this patch bank are sort of like sisters in a sense. Uh, classic sync. Control the depth of the oscillator sync here. Control the filter, make it tighter or darker. There's an up uh, oscillator up an octave here. We can destroy it, of course. Now it's Comor Commando. <laughs> Really, really neat. Um, so you can hear that there's a shitload of bass patches in here. So for all of the uh, industrial techno needs you might have, it is in here. Um, I did want more vocals on the new Comor Commando stuff. Uh, and yeah, worked on both at the same time. That was my suspicion, Seb, that it was that way. Another thing I wanted to uh, mention is that Sebastian did me a great favor when I was starting off as a DJ. 
I gotta say, it's gotta be, I don't know, a decade ago when Sebastian did a remix of one of my songs, One Seriously Perverted Bitch, which you guys would certainly know as whenever someone donates to the channel, which by the way, you can do, the link is in the description. Um, but the song One Seriously Perverted Bitch, there was a Sebastian Comor remix of that song. And uh, that helped a lot because um, when Sebastian Comor remixes one of your songs, all of a sudden people started taking me a little bit more seriously. They were like, whoa, who the fuck is this guy getting remixed by Sebastian? So just want to give you another thank you very much for that my friend i uh, appreciate that hey hey jackie daggers welcome to the stream how's it going we are checking out this incredible uh patch library for serum industrial sounds volume one by sebastian comor so really cool uh this one's called Ephemish brussels Let's see what happens if we add some delay. We can change the character here. The macros are all right here on the left side of the synthesizer, are the four macro knobs, which are a lot of fun to mess with to change this. I appreciate that you spent the time programming these macros so that you can automate these patches or control them uh, from your, let's see, do I have to re-midi learn these each time? That's okay if I do, I don't mind. Um, so I'll just turn that on and uh, we'll do some of that. We can bring the low end out, but I like low end and we can control the detune. cool sound um i just like to emphasize again here how much each one of these sounds could be you know like an entire track or you know it's uh really cool and you can see the wavetables uh are changing as we keep moving and of course you can yourself edit these patches further if you want to start with these um my JX3P is crying. Mine is crying as well. It's right back there. Um, it sounds awesome. Yes, it really does. This is the 10 inch screws base patch. So let's check this out. That one is nasty. Uh, so we can control the scream here. The amount of FM. I don't know if you guys can see very well on the stream, but when you're moving a macro, you can also see what it's doing in the, in the synth. So if you can see on this little knob right over here, if you've got a good high resolution TV or monitor watching this on, as I move this, you can see that what it's doing. I love that the fourth macro is cranking it to 11. Now it sounds like vulture culture, just no chill. Really, really great. Yeah. Um, I still have the flyer from that gig way back when, when on the wall in the studio. That's so awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it does sound really good, really useful. And of course you can dial it back and kind of, you know, get a, a cool, wow, this knob. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very crunchy. And what's worth saying is, although I am an Omnisphere main, the effects on Serum are just incredible. Uh, everything about Serum is just incredible. It's not as set up to do certain types of things that Omnisphere is good at, but what it is set up to do, it is unparalleled. And, you know, I don't know if you guys remember like 10 years ago, 
there was like all of this like battle among the VST producers to make the greatest synth. And when Native Instruments Massive came out, it was like sort of a game changer. And all of a sudden people started making music that you could hear was made with Massive, right? It was just the presets from that were used in like every dubstep song. Um, and I feel like since Serum's been out, the war has been won. Like no one really fucks around with what's the best synth to do, especially the more aggressive side of EDM, um, big room house, dubstep. Everybody's just using uh, Serum. There's other cool synths, like people always comment on this channel that I missed out on Vital, which is another wavetable synth like Serum, and I believe it is free, or at least some version of it is free, which is really cool. That is um, one seriously there it is. <laughs> Thank you. That is one seriously perverted bitch is the uh, tip, and thank you so much, whoever that was. You are very sweet. Thank you, Anonymous, out there. I appreciate it. I can't believe that was so long ago now. Yes, it really was. Um, Arc Runner, welcome to the stream. Uh, Steve is the best beast of a programmer. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, so, bass, three octaves. Wow, interesting. So, you can control the harmonics here. close it off so you could map this macro and in your daw have it open up sort of to build the song right so you could get going with sounds really good flange warp really cool let's see what else we got bass angsty love an angsty bass this is another one of those extremely tight ones. Very hard to play that like in very tight time because it's so plucky, but it sounds really good. Uh, and again, when you're using this in a production and you're running MIDI through this, it's just so awesome to have that snappiness because I think that's where um where a lot of the ebm and industrial guys went wrong is you know by not having your baseline sounds as snappy you don't get that rhythmic impact that you need and when you think of a vintage synth like say the roland sh101 of knights of Reb fame that synth has one envelope that's routed to the filter and the amplifier. So what that means is, is that if you have a quick decay to a low sustain on the filter, you can also have that going to the amplifier. So that moves the bass out of the way of the rest of the track and is really useful in mixing. Um, Anyways, in my opinion, <laughs> apparently the story about how Serum came to be was that Dead Mouse was looking for a specific sense. So he hooked up with Steve Duda and together they came up with what became Serum. I believe that's correct. That's my understanding. And Duda does all of the programming for um, all of the X for Records products. Uh, OTT, probably the most overused free plugin nowadays uh, from X for, as well as um, I know Cthulhu, which is their chord um plug-in was also a dead mouse thing where dead mouse was like i want to have a new way to come up with cool interesting chord progressions uh seems that we don't need an obxa anymore yeah uh doesn't mean i won't try to get one at some point um oh steve duda wrote serum and a bunch of other software that makes sense thank you arc rudder appreciate you uh filling me in there i'm not smart But yeah, when it's that tight, so we've got Decay 1 and Decay 2. Wow, that is aggressive. So this is like um, what I would say is so powerful about a synth like Serum or any wavetable synth, modern wavetable synth, is that you can start with a very harmonically rich oscillator sound like this. But controlling it with the filter, the filter's over here on the right. but you can still get it really tight here if you want it to be really gated sounding. Wow.
yeah, just just a lot going on with this one in particular. Uh, really intense. So, wow. Yes, I'm not smart. I'm a genius. Thanks, mom. <laughs> uh, how I get that tightness is using a very short envelope on the pitch for the oscillators on the course pitch. Okay, so this is a uh, this is a cool trick that was used all the way back on the TR808 from Roland to get the kick drum sound, and I use it on a lot of my leads too, which is that very fast falling pitch. Um, I'm assuming it's a yeah positive values only. So meaning that the pitch starts high and falls very quickly. Um, you can use that on a patch to sort of simulate the sound of a pick hitting it. So like a lot of the uh, guitar sounds that I've used on Vulture Culture tracks are actually just synthesizers with a lot of distortion in that very fast uh, envelope pitch going on. So let's see, if we look in the uh, modulation matrix here, we should be able to see this somewhere. So we have envelope, let's see if it's here. I don't see it on this one. I see wavetable position being modulated. Now in this case, I see I can as kick, perhaps the wavetable itself starts at a higher pitch. I'm not sure. Um, anyways, we'll just keep moving right along. So this is a uh, techno body music. Uh, the phrase, I don't know if this was coined by Andy, but it seems to be how a lot of people referred to that band for a while. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I love that this macro is called, huh? I see it's modulating this comb filter over here. That's what's giving it that. Up. That might be doing that pitchy thing. EQ. So that's sweeping what sounds like a notch filter, which is essentially a phaser, but with a static value. And then as you move this fourth macro, you get just chaos. Uh, so you could get the. That's. Yeah, that's how you get that. You can definitely hear the pitch envelope on this. It's very snappy. Just. Again, I want to emphasize here that uh, we've done, we've covered a lot of patches on this channel, both from modern sound designers and vintage synths. And when I hear one of these patches, I immediately think, wow, this could be an entire song. You, you could just you know, basically use this one patch and just modulate these amounts. And again, you could do this all with, uh, I could MIDI learn this and then move a knob right here. And now I'm controlling it from here. Lenishad79 says, it still doesn't have the balls of my Jupiter 4. Well, you're very fortuitous to have a Jupiter 4. What a legendary synth. The only discrete chip VCO Roland analog poly, if I'm correct. Uh, very famous synthesizer. If you guys want that sound, you can pick it up in the Roland cloud. But of course, the analog stuff's going to probably sound a little different. Robot bits, here we go. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, I'm playing a lot of different notes trying to find... Oh, you guys can see on the, on the little keyboard there. Even though I'm playing up here. Whoa. Huh. What? This is chaos. Oh, but the c decay less really, really uh, sort of useful for 
sound effecty type stuff. Um, again, uh, especially when I, what I'm used to hearing from Sebastian's productions are a lot of sonic bling and a lot of aggression, uh, but still a lot of clarity. All right, Nightmare of Tinnitus. Uh, this sounds like my nightmares. Wow, that is tinnitus-y. So we can take a little of that off with this first macro, I believe. This one says, move me. One of the things that's so cool about using these comb filters is it gives you almost like infinite variation on the sound. So one thing I have like is I don't love uh, using a preset, especially if it's something everybody's used before. But if you pull up this preset sound and just move this move me macro, you've got a different type of sound than everybody else has. Bend me. Really cool, really cool stuff. All right, so that was all of the baseline sounds. So again, there's a lot more. I'm barely covering these. You know, I, I want to make sure that I give a good, um, a really good showing of all of the sounds in this preset bank. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with the lead sounds. So this is obligatory saws. how the um the delays build up after the sound but then it pulls back really quickly so by the way guys real quick i want to stop and ask you guys so far what are you guys thinking about these sounds and do you think um you know we've had a bunch of cool awesome vintage synths i love vintage synths but what do you guys think about these <laughs> It'd be fun to put this up against something like the Roland D50, you know, because um, one thing is, is that it's hard for older synths to sound as great as these do with all of the awesome processing. And we can open this up more if we want that really huge epic sound you know you guys know this chord progression really uh really detuned this more close it off a little bit it's crazy everything about these sounds is like right up against your eardrum too you know none of this stuff sounds like ambient and like far away um <laughs> Mm. Jackie says, I'm loving this pack. These sounds take my brain in a very di different direction than most of the vintage ones do. Yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to cover this this week, too, is, um, I, you know, Jackie, I know you're the same way as me. We started in the world of software since when we were making music in the club, uh, you know, there was n almost no modern hardware since except for the virus T.I., I think was around then. And I remember when we heard that over at Grow's studio, we were like, that doesn't sound that much different than Vanguard, which was the VST we were using at the time. Then we went to Alchemy. Then we went to Omnisphere. Um, but there's this interesting thing about uh, this type of sound in Serum in general that has, um, how do I say this? Well, the thing about vintage synths are, I think they're inspiring because they're big and warm and gooey and glowy. But when you actually go to put them in a mix, they do not really sound great because they're just like dark and dull and distant. And when you hear this stuff, it's like, man, that's going to just slap a bitch in the club. 
It's just so good. Anyways, we got to keep going. Lead Goliath. Definitely a useful sort of EDM type. Really cool. We can control this. We want to get a different type of timbre to it. Wow. Yeah, definitely something we can detune it further like it needs to be detuned further. Really <laughs> huge and aggressive. Um... I expect you to hear these sounds in the hard tracks of a rhythm game. Uh, let's see. So this is a type of lead that I would love to use um, as like a, a counterpoint lead, like sort of a main lead tone, but then have this in the background too, doing something interesting. really like move it around there so we have kind of like you can control the sustain there macro 2 controlling the filter degrader we want to get really bit crushed with it and then bite like we need more bite Really, really aggressive stuff. Um, the Filthy One is the name of this preset, and it earns its title. Definitely really cool. Uh, industrial EDM. Ah, a nice douchebag saw. We can take the verb down a bit. Or maybe the other way. Whoa. Get really big there. Uh, you can control the bass if you want a little less. I would probably use it with less bass. Uh, retune? Really cool. Moving on to modulated in the club. Phaser edge here. We can move this. Control the top distortion. So I'm assuming it's some sort of multi band distortion. This is almost like a great. Um, you can control the filter here. Honestly, like with the delay, if we just turn the delay off real quick, this is a great baseline sound. Really awesome. Like that could be uh, a lead or a bass, depending on what you're trying to do. Really cool. Um, the familiar one. I used this in the demo at the beginning uh, as a layer with the uh, old school Seb lead that I was controlling from the K5000S over there. It is crazy, crazy. Um, it see, seems here this is like a metalized triangle thing, so some sort of wave folded triangle uh, wavetable here. I'm assuming. Just crazy. We can get some more warble. A warble filter, I guess. Jackie says, I love that while vintage sound banks give you the character of the synth, banks on modern software synths feel very specific to the character of the writer. I love that comment so much, Jackie, because that is... Um, Oh, it's not obvious at all. It's actually very intuitive 
to be able to point out that this sound bank sounds like Comor Commando, right? Which is awesome because um, of all of the aggressive electro-industrial acts of the 2000s and 2010s, I think Comor Commando really pushed the envelope with production and mixing and sounding great and sound design. Um, One of the things that, like, I love those old Suicide Commando and Grendel and Hosiko and God Mod, all of those bands. Um, But when you listen to the music from back then, a lot of it doesn't sound very good. (laughs) It sounds really harsh and brittle and i guess that's what they were going for but i don't know why um sebastian if you're still here maybe you could answer this uh it's a question i've always had for you which is you know what led you to be so focused on production and mixing and mastering which obviously led you to working for fixed records which is cell dwellers record label um you know the quality of all of the music that you've worked on, I, I know as soon as it's your uh, signatures on it that it's going to be mixed perfectly. It's going to have crazy sound design. The kick's going to be in your face. The bass is going to be in your face. The leads are going to be in your face. And um, yeah, I was just curious if you're still there, um, what the sort of, what led you into that path? Um, so Jackie says, yeah, Comor's production has a clarity I've only heard in a handful of other artists ever absolutely um so moving right along here we've got battlefields so this to me reminds me a lot of the uh icon of coil stuff you know we can actually boost the low end which is cool Vodka. <laughs> uh, that's a great answer. <laughs> and we're going to FM the oscillator too. Let's see. Hey, welcome to the stream, Mighty Pinto, my friend. Vodka will do the trick. Moving along to the useful one. Wow, that is snappy. Really great. One thing that's uh, interesting about these sounds is that the reverb tails are really huge and then they get out of the way. They're done. They're like, they're, they're, there, and then they're gone, which is uh, different than what I'm used to. You can really hear the sort of early echoes on that. And then it's gone. Right. Uh, comparing this with Luftrum's Vangelis uh, sound bank for Omnisphere, which those reverbs just keep going. <laughs> They're like, you're, you're never going to get them away. Like you hit one note at the beginning of the song and it's still reverberating at the end five minutes later. Um, so, yeah. Um, jokes aside, Sebastian says, I think a lot of the production side of things came from when I started out with quite limited gear, always wanting to get the best sound out of bands that I listened to. So that's a good way to describe it. I believe we talked once about you having a poly six. Was that your first synth? Um, so let's see, Benadryl with drinks and like a never ending hunt for the perfect sound. Yeah, I definitely understand that because I, I too feel that I'm on the hunt for a never ending sound, which is why there's all these stupid fucking keyboards in this room. Um, what's your favorite vodka? Hey, Big Grime, welcome to the stream, my friend. How's it going? That I always listen to music outside of industrial and EBM. I always listen to more top-end produced stuff like Underworld, Left Field, Bjork, Frontline Assembly, Front 242, and Die Krupps. I will say that, like, of the other bands from that era, um, 
Frontline to me always felt production forward, and so did like a group like Rotter Sand always felt production forward. So there were groups that were trying to, you know, push the envelope. But um, yeah, uh, it definitely there was definitely a, a sort of a time where. I wasn't as proud to be uh, an EBM DJ at the same time that like Dead Mouse was putting out these just incredibly impactful high fidelity bangers and then Skrillex and all that stuff. Once again, just really tight envelopes here. Really great. Resonant distortion. Whoa. Uh, the Roland SH-09. Okay, so I have a Roland SH-2 right there. And um, basically the same synth, but as an extra oscillator. I really, really like it. It's a, um, a unique, but I, I mean, I actually just used it on production today um, because the oscillators are just so clear. A lot of the vintage stuff sounds sort of like... Uh, it sounds really warm, but then when you get it in the mix, it sounds really dull. <laughs> and the uh, SH series, really bright, characterful, clear sound to them. So pretty cool that you had that synth and the Poly 6, and we've got those in the studio here now. Frontline was a major inspiration. Their sound design, use of samples, painting a sonic landscape on a, unlike anything I'd ever heard, uh, specifically the Tactical Neural Implant album. Well, I'm going to go back and listen to that. I think I've listened to most of Frontline's stuff over the years, but they've put out a lot of stuff. And um, so I'll have to go back and really sink into that one, kind of get to the headspace there. But yeah, Frontline is probably one of the most underrated ebmx that there's ever been i mean they go all the way back to the 80s um and just really great stuff in a way that a lot of the other acts hadn't really followed up really cool sound uh squares and bits love a square lead Um, yeah, really cool. There's a interesting use of uh, reverb in a lot of these patches where you've got this sort of like close ambience, really uh, interesting reflections going on. Uh, so we can control the bits here. If we want to give it a little bit more of that gritty 80s char character, we can add more squares. I can hear that octave up, I think. Let's add the nicer knob. Square waves, for some reason, have a lot of emotion to it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a thing. Um, for me, a square wave's interesting because it's like, I never really go for it immediately. I'm, you know, obviously the sawtooth is the most used waveform, but, um, but then every so often I'll hear like a really great, um, square lead or something like that. I know like imperative reaction has a track. I'm blanking on the name right now where I was like, wow, that's a great square lead sound, almost fluty to it. Ma'am, did you say oatmeal in the oven? I am so confused by what you mean there. Uh, definitely want to hear about what's going on over there, Nikki. Uh, sink, sink, sink. Definitely could be used for a lot of stuff. We can close the filter. We can turn it into a bass line. So aggressive. Really cool. Let's see if we add some noise. Wow. 
wow, that like really powers it up for sure. And again, the sounds just like die in the sense that like they don't stick around for too long. That's one of my number one tricks when it comes to mixing a track is to get, you know, like give a sound its moment in the spotlight for as short as a time as possible. That way it kind of gets out of there. DAF inspired. Okay, cool. I was talking to Jackie. <laughs> um, Square waves is something I rarely go for, except in sub oscillators, of course. Um, <laughs> I can send you the recipe if you want. It's awesome for having a good breakfast prep for like a week straight. Are you guys talking about baked oatmeal? <laughs> I, I want to have this discussion with you <laughs> soon. Uh, this is not something. Them voices. I love a good vocal format. Definitely like sort of a... Uh, PPG wave type sounds, you know. All right, let's let's control the tone. We can add more bass to it. Horror. More detune. We can close it off. All right, I'm going to go into the effects and actually add a little bit. What's going on with the reverb? Wow. The reverb is... Let's add some decay to this. Oh, I guess it's because it's before the filter, right? How do I move this? Let's put this after the filter. Is there a pre-delay in there? There we go. evocative electric piano sound like does it remind you guys at all of uh, a dx7 type of a sound i don't know i could definitely uh use that sound in anything from a really awesome, uh, really great industrial track all the way into the synthwave stuff, which I know Sebastian's done some too. Um, I ride Harleys. Bummer that I missed most of your broadcast. Don't worry. We've still got plenty to go. We're, we're rocking and rolling. So welcome to the stream, my friend. How's it going? Let's see. The thing you said about giving a sound at spotlight and letting, letting it get out of the way so other things can happen is something I learned from string quartets, of all things. Chamber music like that's such uh, a fascinating give and take where no one instrument holds the foreground for a significant amount of time. Yeah, and uh, that's a lesson too. So, you know, the arrangement. I, I know for years, you know, I was afraid to automate the levels of things as much. And now... Um, you know, doing something like pulling the bass line back a little bit on the chorus, right? Where you just don't need it to be like that super aggressive thing all the way and maybe let the chorus breathe a bit. Things like that can do a lot. Um, moving on to the all-purpose one. Let's see what we can do. We can control the tone. Add some bad tape effect. And more toys. Ooh, that's very nice. Oh, I see the bad tape kind of gives it that warbly thing.
Uh, getting over COVID, so I'm glad to be upright enjoying your broadcast. Well, I'm glad you're uh, doing okay. COVID's a horrible thing, but I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, Sebastian says to Jackie, 100%, I learned that the hard way. Too long decay can really muddy a mix up. Music is always the space in between notes. I'm very happy to not only be getting a chance to um, check out your sounds, but also get a little bit of wisdom. Uh, yeah, the flu ain't great either. Been getting over that myself. Man, a lot of people are getting sick right now. That's a thing. Far out lead. Let's see what we got here. Whoa. Lots of interesting ring mod going on. So for me, with this one, that is very intense. Um, oh, wow, you can take it almost to, you can kind of like clean it up a little. Wow. I love that like these macros are like, what space? What? I'm wondering if that's a little bit more. Oh, this is ring mod filter. See if I can see what this knob is doing. Wow. That is intense. Uh, fuck COVID, cold and flu. Stay well, everybody. The world is covered in death. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's at least it's paying Nikki's nurse bills. Oh, yeah, here we go. Beautiful. All right, so let's see what these macros do. Open, opens it up. down there I love when a patch immediately starts pushing me in a certain direction you know, uh, there's certain things that, you know, certain, I, I'm sure you guys hear like little habits that I have where I play similar chords and leads and progressions as I'm testing out a sound. Um, but this one like immediately pulled me into a certain direction, almost like a, um, reminded me of the soundtrack of the thing, right? Really ominous. I'd probably dull the reverb a bit. back over here and close it off a little bit. Definitely could be useful in like a soundtrack. So not just a um, patch for uh, EDM, EBM industrial producers, but for other people as well. Click on the one next to the macro. It'll show you where the modulation is added. Interesting. Okay, so... Oh, I see. So that actually shows you where it's going. Cool. Uh, so if I go to flange, let's go into the filter mix. Or is that over here? Let's see. 
Ah, I see. It's up here. It's the mix for the flanger. Nice tip. Thank you. Appreciate that. I actually only um, got Serum to do this stream, so I don't use Serum at all. Um, but it's a very intuitively laid out synthesizer, so it's not uh, particularly hard to pick up what's going on. But um, you can rent Serum for 10 bucks a month. And so that's what I did. I was like, well, I'll just rent it and uh, check out these sounds and uh, see if I decide to actually keep... Uh, it's a rent-to-own type thing. So I think you'd make like 19 payments once a month and then you own it, which is the full price of 190 bucks, which is actually very reasonable for this synth anyways, but... I just, at this point, have spent so much on vintage synths, and I use Omnisphere mostly, so, uh, yeah. Mm. Anyways, let's keep moving on here. So we've got Distorted Robots. Definitely kind of, uh, you know, like a good, useful... Uh, sort of sound. I'm going to try to run through a few more of these real quick because looking at the time, I want to make sure we're like 36 patches in. There's 100 patches, so let's make sure we get there. Um, yes, it's it's fun to watch for the noobs for synthesis, and it's also, um, I think, very good for teaching you synthesis because it's all right there. You know, you can just look at it and you're like, okay, I get what's going on. Yeah, this one's really good. I used it um, just to really... There we go. That's one that keeps going, but even that sort of uh, gets out of there. Yeah, really good. Uh, let's see. Plucker. We can get it really tight, so if we want to do some kind of like that sort of sound, little uh, raindrop type stuff, um, we keep moving on here. Destroy the signs. Oh, that's gorgeous. We can add more sign to it. Let's see what this is doing. Uh, let's see if we can see it. Am I up? Oh, it's adding this extra oscillator here. You can see this little thing. More spook. That's adding the size here. Industrialize. More distortion, probably. Oh, we can make it kind of a square, too. Love, love, love a... There's something about the clarity, the purity of a sine wave. Um, I guess we're in a square wave territory now, but... And then just like that, like, grittiness, the texture to it. have a wonderful night um yes just listen to one by one the xenomorph remix and it, it slaps yes it does sir yes it does uh moving back over here that lead the uh the most aggressive uh sort of thing reminds me a lot of the um hazer remix of uh it's not our fault by fuck off that band yeah just just chaos like cinematic huge detune saws sort of a sound uh old school step so this is the one i used in the intro
What I love about this one in particular is that it has a sort of vocal-like quality to it. This is one of my favorite patches on the whole thing. As you hold a note down. Just immediately evocative and amazing. Like, I never want to be without this sound. Um, really interesting. And so we can close the filter off. I love that you still get the noise through, though. We can do and Let's see what happens with this. Oh, interesting. So it's probably using the EQ here to close off. Yeah, changing the frequency here. Cool. Macro three. Changing the boof. <laughs> Whatever that means. Really just, it's almost like it's halfway between like a lead guitar sound. Wow, that's crazy if you do that. That's a little insane. But it's also got that kind of vocal quality to it and sort of, yeah, it's just gorgeous. It responds so well. It, it, it's like it just begs to be played uh, evocatively. Yeah, it's just got that incredible quality to it. Really cool sound. And for me, kind of exemplifies what's so great about Sebastian Sound Design, which is, uh, I don't think I've ever heard that before in an industrial song, but it's aggressive, it's interesting, it's chaotic, uh, but it's beautiful. You know, it's not um, just another sawtooth, detuned sawtooth thing. Um, so we're in the pads now, which is, of course, Daddy's favorite. dirty, really aggressive. Let me make it further away. Lots of distortion there. Um, modulating pad, this one's cool. We can add more filth if that's not dirty enough. Depends. 20 minutes to an hour. Get lost in the details at times. Yeah, that's one of the things that's really cool about getting a patch bank like this, too, is you can tweak these with the macros here, um, but, you know, you don't have to spend all that time like setting up the routings that you use all the time cool um alien worlds oh the bass on that forty thieves welcome back to the stream my friend how's it going really cool detune sadness also i use this one in the intro track it's really cool especially if you play one note at a time 
the sort of warbly thing going on. It's almost got some of that JX3P analog tenderness, you know what I'm talking about? Kind of Blade Runner, yeah, for sure. You could, you know... Uh open that up a little yeah it does have that doesn't it let's uh let's see real quick here envelope one let's add some attack to this Slight random detuning, yeah. That's definitely what's selling it, is that sort of interesting uh, wobble in and out. It's really, really good. And uh, a good example, too, of how software can actually sound more analog than analog when you apply um, some randomness to the pitch, some randomness to filter. Like, you have to, like... That's the problem with software, but also the good thing is you have all the control in the world, but if you just start and just don't add that life to the sound, which the life is definitely here in these patches, um, you can get that sort of where you get kind of stuck in it sounding really dry and boring, but if you add that in there, you can get some really cool stuff. So, moving right along, Horror Pad. Right, yeah, so Rachel is on my shirt, I forgot. Yeah, so if you need that sound, it's there, really intense. Uh, simply far away. speaks for itself i'm sold on just this pad alone yeah this one is uh one 
to use for many songs over many years. Just... close here you can almost get like a soundtrack from the jx8 piece type sound cool way too cool of a thing i use this one on the intro too this is an awesome is awesome pad hey anonymous thank you for the six dollar and 66 cent tip the comment says this is fascinating well i'm glad you're having a good time i'm having a great time hanging out with all of you guys it's scum night we do this every wednesday at 9 p.m checking out different synth related things if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel like the video and become a member membership gives you access to all of these really great emojis that are in here as well as all the uh really cool vulture culture music we've released over the years so a fun thing can we like do something with that pad sometime let's do something with this pad check this one out Way too up high. Here, wait. really cool and of course we can close it off and i wasn't using the macros i actually automated this uh with another filter in the track then we get it really really dirty if you want um which is cool let's uh keep going here digital phaser could spend an hour on each one of these sounds but we'll never get through everything if i don't keep moving here so we've got a gated pad i use this one too on the intro uh did a little of this type of thing really useful for those future pop synth poppy type sounds Gated pads used to be all over the place. Uh, don't hear them as often anymore. I don't know why that is exactly, but a lot of the times having a rhythmic element in a track can really be great. Can you jump back to that last pad with the movement and stagger your chords? Like, don't play all the notes at once. I'm curious what all that rhythmic interplay you could get from that, if you can be needy. Of course you can. What, did you want the phaser or the LFO one? The phaser one? I 
actually sounded really good staggering the notes out playing one note at a time with digital phaser but yes i was right lfo so let's try that one out real quick see what we get Also really glad you said that, Jackie. That is probably the better way to use this one is playing that single note because you get a little bit more clarity. The notes aren't fighting for each other. Really, really cool. Super, super cool. Yeah, I know. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Fuck. All right. Ah, a good band rejected. I love a good notch filter. Uh, so let's see what we can do here. So... We can change the wavetable here. Some of these have more of like an FME type thing. Yeah, really cool. Let's keep moving here. Laser blur. That's a useful thing. Uh, snare, oh, we're into the percussion by the way. a useful snare we can make the envelope snappier here if you need that so it's all there let's keep going here tom kick this one's really good move down an octave really useful type thing I'm going to keep going. I could spend all night here, but we've already been going for a bit, so. Really a uh, unique sound. This is under kittens. Little, uh, little yoy type bit crusher thing. Let's see, Xeno kick. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Prepare your subwoofers. Really cool. We can add some more distortion if we need more oons. <laughs> Was a sus way to, to not say that it's inspired by the Underworld song Kittens, that's awesome. If we need more oons, it's there. If we need more sign. D, that's what it should be tuned to. And we can use a DJ filter, right, to filter out, so. It basically could be a really great just 808 thing for like any sort of hip hop type thing really good that's super awesome i want to sample that and use that for sure uh distorted kick here we go keep moving resonant perk i use this one i love these types of sounds Clank Factory. Another, like this one patch is like, I need to sample it all over the keyboard because you need these types of sounds to have that convincing front 242 industrial type thing. And every note is a different sort of timbre that you could use. Industry. 
Yeah, add more distortion. I don't think it needs it though. I like that it's dynamic. I don't want to flatten out the waveform with too much distortion. I mean, awesome. Just really useful stuff. Um, one of the many th cool things about Serum in the noise oscillator, you can drop in any sample you want to use as part of the sound. So going back to that one, let's go check that out. Oh, so we've got this Xeno Clank, which is a custom noise thing. That's really cool. Uh, I didn't know that about um, Serum. I knew you could get samples in somehow. Very uh, useful stuff here using the Xeno snare, right? Uh, static flange snare. Just really great, useful uh, industrial stuff. 90s industrial perk. <laughs> right, noise uh, through a filter. The world in my eyes snare. Oh, interesting. The last patch. Oh, I can kind of hear it. Depeche Mode song. Somewhere, I don't know, I'd have to listen to it. I don't want to get a copyright strike by pulling it up right now, but I bet if you play it right on the right note. Um, so, old hi-hat. We all remember that sound. 424-ish uh, hi-hat. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's a uh, very famous type sound, too. Oh, is it C4? Okay, we'll go back and we'll do that real quick, just for fun. Uh, C4. Is that C4? I have my, uh, I keep moving my octave on my keyboard. That's too low. I think that's too high, so I'm assuming it's this one. Something like that. I don't know. I hope I'm doing it justice. Uh, moving along, Dirty Kick Tom. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Really good, dirty percu percussion type thing, like using that as an offset with a kick drum, you know, like... Really awesome. Uh, classic kick and more. Oh, I really like this one too, because to me, that sounds like a vintage drum machine, right? And you can play kind of almost like snare stuff up here. Really cool. Uh, distorted snare. Oh, I think I used this in the track too. Sounds like someone being punched. You need those sorts of like super aggressive noisy snares to sell the genre. Wow, this is also a very like kind of res type sound. Yeah, like sort of a kick tom type thing. There's a snare going through the Sherman filter bank too. Oh, interesting. Oh, the industrial snare. This is what I used. Dub station, welcome to the stream. How's it going, my friend? How are you? Glitchy March. I like that you get some randomness there. Oh, this is another really great one. I like that that's, uh, yeah, it's just, I use this one too to make a uh, sort of, um, what do you call it, impact sound that I used in the track as well. 
This is be sounding like the raw. <laughs> the industrial snare sends me back in time. Yes, it does. It does bring you back to that uh, era, right? We got some textures here. If you need some of that for your track, LV426, our favorite planet. can feel the Xenos coming. Factory drone. Electric buzz. And I use some of these types of sounds in my track uh, cut up and used as sort of a little bit of sonic bling, like I said, to sort of get some of these really great Comor Commando type textures into the track to try to sell that. Industrial bagpipe. Interesting jump scare. Yeah, that's it. Horror movie. Geiger v vinyl. Just watch the uh, Chernobyl uh, series. That's a really great sort of docudrama, whatever you want to call that. And hearing this sound is just terrifying after seeing that. Yeah, that's nightmarish. Distortion, distress. Random noise. These are all so great. I don't mean to be running through them. It's like I said, I just want, I usually try to keep the stream to about two hours and I'm aware that I'm up against the wall. I uh, just want to make sure. We've got uh, foil and coil. So we got some arpeggiated sounds. So really cool. Econ, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Frederickstad. I like how aggressive these textures still have a roundness to them in contrast to some of the textures in Omnisphere Seismic Shock, which can be so ridiculously sharp. Yeah, actually, I was thinking about, um, I'm glad you brought that up because I totally forgot. Um, the comparison here would be to Seismic Shock, right? So I've already done a video on that library, and it's very similar to this um, in the sense of, I could see the same type of music being made with it. That one is obviously a little bit more dubstep oriented and edm orient oriented and this is like man this is sebastian in you know purity right here um but yeah there is an element of this that i appreciate which is that it's not um it's still a lot of the sounds are very playable and melodic uh 
without being too, uh, like you said, sharp. Econ says, loving the sounds already. Well, there's more to come, and everybody loves a good arpeggiator. Uh, Future Pop riff. Oh, I remember this one. Um, What is it? Uh, I'm uh, going to change the um, BPM here. What what is the the fucking note from uh, Chrome by VNV Nation? Definitely a famous sort of sound uh, that a f- couple of you guys might know. Uh, go time. Let's turn the BPM down a bit. A little intense. A little sequence in there. Angsty. Have a wonderful night, Nikki. I love you so much. Get some rest. You've deserved it. You deserve it. You're an amazing human being. Did somebody say industrial? Hey, Martin, how's it going, my friend? Good to see you. It's been a while. Arp noise groove. Really cool. Uh, Mouse Alive. I'm wondering if that's the MAU5 type mouse. Kind of like Sophie Needs a Ladder. I want to see what that's doing. <sighs> All right, so this is detuning this oscillator. Is this... Why does it sound the way it sounds? Is there some FM going on or something? Because you're getting that really interesting tone to it. Yeah, really cool. Definitely has that Sophie Needs a Ladder. (laughs) My favorite Alive Mouse song, mine as well. That song slaps. That was when I started to take uh, Dead Mouse seriously. I was like, whoa, shit. That that fucks some stuff up. Uh, Tension for you. This one is like a Comor Commando type sound. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, could hear that type of sound in a Comor Commando track. Uh, Devils and Animals. Just Sonic Candy, Jilted Wah. This could be used definitely in more of like a Dream Pop production too. White noise impact. We got a couple of effects right here at the end to call it a day. Useful for buildups and stuff. I use this as well in the intro.
intro because this is such a great like impact. FM Plucky. Honestly, a great lead. Sonar Factory, use this one as well. So as we come to the end here, Sebastian, I'd love you uh, to ask you if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, if there's anything you'd like people who maybe watch this video to know. One more time, I want to say a big thank you for being here and for making this sound bank. It's amazing. The link is in the description. It's only $25, which is amazing to get the essence of Comor Commando in a sound bank. Uh, so as I play the last few, I use this one all over the track because it's super useful. I could definitely hear that in, you know, basically anything from EDM all the way through to the darkest shit could benefit from a really cool sound like that. It's just a hype sound. Um, yes, uh, F mod, FM mod slowing down. This is also a very famous sound. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Arc Runner says to Sebastian. Uh, definitely really cool. Thank you so much from Jackie. The sound bank is beautiful. It's been great to hear you talk about these sounds. Swarming nightmares. Mario Space Lab. Kind of like a Nostromo alarm. A massive hit. Exactly what it says on the label. And uh, I think that was it. I think that was the last sound, right? Yes, so we have covered it all. Um, so yeah, just really great. Really, really good. We'll move back over here real quick. Um, just in case there's anything else you guys want to ask Sebastian, this would be a great time. That's so cool. I didn't know the Virus TI comes shipped with a bunch of presets of yours. That's really awesome, actually. Um, obviously, the Virus was the sound of so many of those future pop and, you know, synth acts of that era. And um, still, those things do not drop in value. Like, they are still expensive. Uh, and it's because, although they don't really sound like anything else, they're just workhorse machines and they sound great so um it's a shame there haven't been any virus since um since the owner has gone on to really focus on guitar amps with the kemper profiling amplifier so there just haven't been any new ones but um really really cool and um it's just been a real joy getting a chance to check out some of this stuff and 
hang out with you guys and have a good evening uh checking out synth stuff so once again thank you very much uh sebastian for being here and for making these awesome sounds um character in these sounds are reminiscent of the virus for sure i agree with that definitely um yeah just been a real treat and uh, I should mention, within the limits of an NDA, in January I'll be making a bank for a still unreleased VST synth. Well, that's really cool. I'll, uh, if you can give me some info about that without breaking the NDA, maybe when it gets a little bit closer uh, and it's more public knowledge, I'd love to check it out on this channel. Um, cannot mention what company, however, after seeing the screenshots of the temporary interface, it's going to be something insane. I wish I could say more. Uh, Serum became my virus replacement. I think it did for a lot of people. I mean, Serum is uh, hard to argue with. Um, it basically does everything you could ever want. Um, so, yeah, really excited. Yeah, January's not far at all. So, um, if it's something that we can do on this channel, let me know. It would be a lot of fun. So, thank you so much, my friend. It's been a great time, uh, you know, and yeah. I think that's a good thing, good place to leave it. So next week, Wednesday at nine, we're going to be experimenting with a, I think from about 1980, Mark II vintage Korg MS-20. So excited to have my first semi-modular synth in the studio. Really, really fun to be experimenting with that. You can actually get the virus wavetables for Serum for free on the interwebs. Yes, I've seen that. You can get a lot of wavetables. Uh, you can even get one of my favorite synths, the Kawai K1 wavetables for Serum or a bunch of other things like that. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for being amazing. I am Vulture, you are the culture, and I go hope you guys have a wonderful week. Stay safe out there, and yeah, love and light, bitches. I'm out.